I'm so excited to tell you about the Kroger Opt-Up app. OptUp is your virtual assistant for healthier shopping. I've been using OptUp with my grocery shopping, and now I'm more mindful as I make food choices for my family at Kroger. What I love the most is how OptUp tracks my household score automatically based off what I'm purchasing at Kroger. OptUp also makes recommendations for healthier alternatives and nutrition facts of the foods we purchase. OptUp is very easy to use. Download it today in the App Store or Google Play. Welcome to the Produce Moms Podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Welcome everyone. Welcome back to the Produce Moms podcast. I am so excited to share another remarkable guest with you, another woman who has changed agriculture forever. She's left her mark and in many ways she's her journey's just beginning. So I look forward to sharing more, uh, getting to know Margaret Diarigo Martin better myself. Um, Margaret Diarigo has, man, she, this woman has been an advocate, inspiration, an example for women her entire career, which spans, I believe, nearly 30 years in produce. Uh, she has made a positive difference on the community, the nonprofit sector, and the ag industry, both locally and globally. Uh, something I love about Margaret is that she is the founder of Margaret Inc. We're going to learn more about that today. She has been recognized uh, by Ag Against Hunger as Woman of the Year. And she's involved with several nonprofits that mean a lot to the produce industry, inc- including Hartnell College Foundation, Selena City Elementary Educational Foundation. Margaret has served as the director of our produce industry's leading trade organization, the Produce Marketing Association. And she's just someone that I uh, I have admired from afar for a long time. So it's wonderful to bring her onto the podcast and learn more about Margaret. So Margaret, welcome. Thank you. What a great introduction. Thank you so much for all of that. Oh, you're welcome. So um, was I correct in my assessment that you've been part of the produce industry for nearly 30 years? Is that right? Or is it more of a lifetime? Maybe even longer. I mean, growing up in a produce family, I feel like, um, you know, from from my birth, I was sort of engaged in the industry, but definitely 30 years in um, at a, at a capacity of working and earning a, a living wage. Yes, that's correct. Right. So, I mean, the Diarigo family is is certainly well known throughout the produce industry. Tell us a little bit more about, um, you know, growing up as part of that family and what, what, what that means. What do you guys grow? What do you do? Well, we, um, we are a vertically integrated company that grows. Um, we started out growing broccoli, which is kind of our claim to fame was bringing broccoli to the United States and growing it commercially which is kind of cool, uh, under the Andy Boy label. Mm-hmm. Um, our biggest commodity now is romaine hearts, but we grow iceberg lettuce, all different types of leaf lettuce. Um, and then we, we have uh, berries that go through our facility. We do some Italian specialties like broccoli rob, which is my favorite vegetable on the planet. Yeah, And fennel delicious. and cactus pear, so a couple specialty things as well. Cool. You know, and fun fact yeah, for you, was- Margaret, did you know that yeah. uh, for over 10 years I sold fresh produce? at the wholesale distribution stage of the supply chain. Yeah. I was employed at Indianapolis fruit company managed. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Managed just over 300 retail accounts during my tenure there and, uh, serviced a lot of Hispanic market accounts like your Mexican bodega markets. And so I have great memories of selling your cactus pears. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Most people don't even know what they are. So I appreciate that. I appreciate your knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So today now you have a, you have what, when I see your title on LinkedIn and on the Margaret Inc. website, I, it moves me. You are the president of community development at Taylor Farms, vice president of community development at Taylor Farms. Yes. I'm kind of wearing a couple different hats um, right now, but sort of in transition in my career. Mm -hmm. Um, One of my goals after, um, I finished my MBA a couple weeks ago, which I'm ah. super thrilled about. 
Thank you. <laughs> that was a huge accomplishment for me to be a working mom, um, full time, raising twin boys that are 13 years old and getting an MBA. Um, uh, quite a yeah. challenge, but I can't imagine. I it was, yeah, it was an amazing experience. I learned so much. And um, after I graduated, everyone kept saying, well, what are you going to do next? Or what are you going to do with your MBA? And I said, you know what? I've never been a CEO. And so I'm going to start my own company. I'm going to be CEO of my own business. And I have no idea how I'm going to make money at it. But that's something that I want to do. So I started Market Inc., um, a, a name that a friend of mine kind of gave me and I stole it. Um, and, and basically, it's um, under Dorigo Consulting. What, I, what I'm planning to do is I'm, I want to empower women through um, education, leadership development, and community engagement. So basically taking women in the community and connecting them to different types of resources. Right. Um, so it's kind of, it's a very interesting model. I've been actually managing Empower, um, which is an organization that inspires, prepares, motivates, organizes women to engage and reinvest. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been doing that for, um, this is our, our 10 year anniversary. So I was the founder of that organization and it's been an incredible journey, just helping women in the community by inspiring them and motivating them, connecting them to different opportunities. Um, so I'm kind of taking that and making a little bit more of a formal, um, organizational ask. Like I'm, I want to go out in the community and support women however I can to help connect them to um, make their lives successful. So um, right now I'm actually managing Empower as a consultant. Um, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm still working at Taylor Farms and I'm kind of in transition probably over the next few months, but I'll be working on special projects for Bruce Taylor, things that he's really passionate about, basically around education and youth. Right. And then I've got a couple other things I'm working on. One of them is the Blue Zone project for our local hospital where I'm currently a board of trustees. We're trying to take our community to a healthier level and make it a, um, a community of wellness and health and opportunity and where people can live longer, live better lives. So that's something that, um, that we're hoping to launch in the fall, and I want to be part of that process as well. So like I said, I wear lots of different hats. Yeah. I mean, obviously you wear a lot of hats now. You're talking about the wellness and empowerment and how, tell us how you feel those, those, those critical components of life and reaching goals and, um, you know, attaining your maximum potential. How do you feel, what, what role does fresh produce have in that? Well, I think for me, it's, um, it's kind of the, it's kind of the cornerstone or the, um, the baseline because. I, I truly believe, and I live my life this way, that, you know, if you're, what you're putting in your body makes a huge impact on your ability to be, um, to think and to function and to feel at your best. So um, eating a, a healthy diet, I think, is super critical um, for our community and for, especially for our youth. Um, I struggle with that because, like I said, I have teenagers that don't always want to make the best choices, so I'm always, like, harping on fresh produce, fresh produce. Right. But I really believe that it's, it's really important. That's why I love being part of an industry that, that I think is, um, you know, it's all about health and wellness and that's really what we're promoting. And if people just ate what, what we grew, they, you know, they'd have a, a better life. I agree. So, um, it's, it's challenging because we are combating, you know, all these, um, fast food companies and, you know, chips and soda and all that stuff that's not good for our bodies and we know it, but it's, it's tempting. And I think it's really hard for, for people to make good choices. Um, one of the things that I think, um, that I really push here in our community is, having salad bars in our schools through the Grocery Shipper Association Foundation. That was something that I began when I was a Grocery Shipper um, incoming president because I wanted to give our youth access to fresh fruits and vegetables. I think if you give them access, they'll make a better choice. If you don't give them access, then they're going to eat the things they shouldn't be eating. So we put a lot of salad bars in schools here, and that's been really successful. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge advocate for the salad bar movement as well, and I believe wholeheartedly that access is – really the number one barrier in my opinion um to to getting people to eat more fresh produce it's people have to be able to taste it and experience it to fall in love with it and um you know the health claims and wellness the science behind the food really isn't enough but once people try it and realize how delicious fresh produce is and how good it makes you feel um i do believe that that's a that's a game changer so i did not realize margaret how many how many incredible um, industry board and leadership positions you had. So you worked also on the Grower Shipper Foundation. Did you, what was your role there? um, I was president of the um, association for a year term. And then immediately Mm -hmm. afterwards, I went on to the Grower Shipper Association Foundation Board. Okay. I always loved the nonprofit side of business because I I just, 
I find it really rewarding. So yeah. I volunteered there and we, um, we grew our Salabar program to, you know, fund over 50 um, Salabars in Monterey County. And um, now we've expanded into San Benito County and going into Santa Cruz County. So that's probably the most important thing that I did. And my role there was just provide that type of leadership, go out and raise the money, work with the school district, um, help them secure fresh local product, and then uh, make sure that they keep the, the uh, salad bars up and going, that they're putting the right things in there. We don't want canned peaches and croutons. We want, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables. Right. So it's been really fun. Good, good. And so for our listeners, um, you know, that are enjoying learning more about Margaret, another another accolade that she has received is the United Fresh Woman of the Year distinction. That is... Um, that's a, that's a speech and a reception and a merit that so many, uh, I mean, I think all females within the produce industry really look with anticipation to see who the, um, who the recipient will be each and every year. This year, we're going to recognize Cindy Jewell. Uh, Margaret, what year did, uh, what year were you recognized and what did that mean to you to have that opportunity to keynote and serve as really the figurehead for women in produce? I don't remember the exact year. It was quite a while ago. It was I want to say it was probably 10 years ago. Okay. Um, Cause I was in my mid forties and I was still at the Regal brothers at the time, but um, it's, that's one of those amazing honors. Not only do you get to, um, you know, speak to women in the audience and, and gentlemen in the industry, but to be honored by your peers, I think it's something that's pretty incredible. Um, as you know, there's not, there's a lot more women coming into produce than there have been um, recently, but back then there weren't a lot of women in, in, um, executive position. So it was a huge honor. I really enjoyed it. It was a great opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I don't think people realize how male dominated agriculture and fresh produce has been. I do feel as someone who is in my mid thirties, I do certainly see that, that shift occurring. You know, I've been part of this Mm -hmm. industry now for almost 13, 13 years. Yes. 13 years. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I've seen a huge shift. When I started in produce, I was the youngest person in the sales office, and I was the only female in the pro- on the produce sales team at a pretty sizable oh wholesale distribu- <laughs> distributor. So yeah, I mean, and now, of course, there's there's a greater balance if I go back to my former employer and visit them. And I, I see it with all the companies and the people I work with where we're getting closer, but we're still not, we're still not there. And that's, that's one thing that when I when I ran across the Margaret Inc. website, which for anyone listening, it's margaret-inc.com or just simply Google Margaret Inc. and it'll take you right to it. Um, but it, the, the, the identifier right there on, your, on the About tab on the Margaret Inc. website reads, Margaret Inc. is an organization that focuses solely on empowering women so that they have the skills and confidence to realize the greatness that is within them. I love that. Thank you. Yes. No, so. it, 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 it's, a, it's a fun mission. Um, I think it's really important, especially in today's world. I think women are getting a lot more attention, um, and rightly so. I think we've definitely earned it. It's, a, it's our time. And so if I can do anything to help um, raise women up and lift them up, in our, in, you know, mostly locally, that's really what I want to do. Like it's, right. um, it's my passion. I don't want to say necessarily a job. It's more of a passion and um, a commitment that, you know, I've been very fortunate to, to be where I am because of my family business and my background and my name, but um, I want to help other women get to a higher status as well. Right, right. Well, passion is what is behind all entrepreneurial efforts, uh, so welcome to the club. <laughs> um, yeah, no, so um, tell me a little bit about how... Uh, there's got a there's there's probably several countless maybe mentors that changed your life. I know that I have mentors who have changed my life. Are you comfortable sharing uh, a story about one Absolutely. of your mentors? Okay, yeah. Go ahead. So I mean, I think my my mom and dad were definitely huge influencers. My mom was a philanthropist and she volunteered in the community um, and gave us opportunities to do that as well. So she definitely inspired me on the philanthropy side, and then my father on the business side. You know, just watching him go to work tirelessly and really his love for farming and dirt and, you know, um, was, was great. But as, you know, as, a, as I've grown up, um, there's several men and women, uh, Don Chapin is one gentleman that's, um, a business owner and philanthropist in the community that I really look up to. We meet several times a year and he really helps inspire me and keep me on track. And he's the one that encouraged me to run for, for, um, for office for the um, hospital, which was, has been a great experience 
Tonya Angel is definitely one of those women that I reach out to frequently. Um, she gives me such great advice. Like I go to her when I'm nervous about anything and I just need to, you know, bounce things off of her. So she's been a tremendous asset to me. Um, so, and I also have a younger woman that I, um, that I consider a mentor because she's got a young, youthful millennial kind of perspective. So right. I think it's good to have um, mentors that are older, younger, um, and both genders because yeah. they offer a lot of different perspectives. Yeah, that's, that's great advice. Um, and so with the, with the nonprofit empower, um, on the website, it indicates that there's going to be an upcoming mentor mapping program for women. What I'm, I mean, yeah, so that's what does that, that um, mean? That I to start. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think mentors have been so important in my life and I think yeah. there's a lot of younger women that, that may not have mentors or don't know how to access them or are afraid to ask sometimes. Right. So um, our plan for 2019, um, now that we're kind of a, a new nonprofit and um, going in or finishing our 10th year, that um, I want to have a more of a formal mentor mapping. So basically reaching out to women in the community, asking them to give an hour a month, um, not structured, but just hooking them up with a younger woman, um, probably college age, right. that needs a little bit more support and help them kind of in their career pathway. So. Um, I have so many women that they all have something to offer. They have some special talent. So as I'm meeting with each one of them, I'm taking notes. Okay, Susan's good at, you know, financial investing and Kathy's a, you know, retired banker. So we all have these gifts. Um, another friend of mine is incredible at setting up professional LinkedIn pages, which she helped me design mm -hmm. mine because I just kind of threw stuff down there. I didn't know what I was doing. She mm -hmm. said, that's like a, you know, it's a resume. Mm -hmm. It's got to be really professionally done. So She's going to offer to donate her time to train some young women from Hartnell College and help them develop their LinkedIn page. So things like that, I think, are just really important to hook these women up with resources that will help them benefit them in their career and, and in their lives. Yeah, that's amazing. You know what? If you do any if you do any webinars on any of these topics, let us know because I'd love to share the oh. yeah share the Absolutely. access point with the with the people who follow the post moms. I'll tell you what I could. <laughs> Uh, listening to you talk about some of the skills you guys are going to share uh, in the guidance, I, I personally could also benefit. So it uh, sounds very exciting, very important, the work that you're doing. And that's really our goal here with the podcast is to identify people that are doing work the, that matters the most. And uh, when I look at an organization like Margaret Inc., and when I look at a woman like you, who's who's, uh, you know, truly been a trailblazer within the produce industry, uh, certainly helped set the path that I've been able to walk down as someone who enjoys um, having this great opportunity and responsibility to educate people about fresh produce. Uh, you know, there's, there's this overwhelming sense of gratitude and also a, a real desire to help share your story. So thank you so much for, you know, you. for all of, yeah, for all of this information that you've shared, we're, we're, uh, closing in on our time, but I do have, um, I have a couple questions I want to ask. And then if there's anything else that you want to say in closing, uh, we'll certainly get to that. But, um, one question that I want to ask you is if there is one thing, a, a woman like you who knows so much about fresh produce and, you know, it's, it's part of your personal culture as a, you know, as a Diarigo and it's, you know, certainly part of your passion. Um, if you could tell moms like me um, and moms that are following the produce moms, one thing about fresh produce, what would you tell them? Oh gosh, I just, um, I tell them it's delicious. Um, and it's, you know, it's critical for, for our health and well being, and it makes you feel really good. I know when I eat fresh produce, I feel fantastic. So, um, try new things, try new vegetables. As a kid, I didn't like a lot of things and I like them all now because my mom made me try them. So, yeah. um, and, and learn to cook again, learn to really appreciate, um, how to prepare them differently. And, um, I think cooking is a great way for people to experience vegetables and, in a, in a different way. Yeah. Great, great feedback. Thank you. And then, uh, you know, I, I anticipate that a lot of women within the produce industry and men are probably tuning in to the podcast following along. So if you have any advice for anyone within the produce industry, that's an aspiring leader or, or, you know, wanting that, that next breakthrough opportunity to come their way, do you have any wisdom or advice that you can share with them? Um, you know, I think what served me the best is just um, having courage, um, having compassion, having empathy, um, and just never giving up. I think, you know, my my journey didn't come easy. I had to push and push and climb and 
Um, but I never gave up. I just believed in myself and I knew I could do whatever I set out to accomplish. So I think it's just having courage and confidence in yourself to, um, to, you know, continue to grow, learn, grow, educate yourself and, you know, rise above or go for that position that you're looking for. Don't, don't stop. Right. Great advice. And I will say too, that about two years ago, um, I was told by, you know, someone that I, I really admire and respect. And, uh, he said to me, he's like, who are your mentors? And I was like, I, I don't know. Like, is that a formal title? I don't know. I have a lot of people I admire. Does that make them a mentor? And he was like, no, you need to ask someone that you admire if they will be your mentor. And, yep. you know, that was really a changing, that was a critical moment within my career when I made that phone call. Um, and asked, and asked a woman that I admired, you know, and that I admire so much in this pro in the produce industry to be my mentor. And, um, and that is, that is another piece of advice that I want to encourage everyone who's listening to Margaret, who is a champion for mentoring, who has built, you know, an, an, or an organization and a non-for-profit around, um, helping people understand the process of mentoring and, and, and reap the benefits of that, both on the mentor and mentee side. There's benefits on both both sides of that uh, relationship, but I I do want to emphasize that you need you need mentors in life. Absolutely, it's one. Of the, it's been one of the most um, meaningful things I've done, and that I've been able to receive from as well. So I agree, it goes both directions, and keep paying it forward. Amen to that. So, well, Margaret. I thank you so much for being on the podcast. If there's anything else you'd like to say in closing, uh, we, you know, we certainly want you to have the last word here. So, <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, um, I just, I want to thank you for the opportunity. Um, I wanted to say, you know, you know, congratulations to you on your business venture. And um, I just encourage more women to follow their dreams and follow their passion. And um, I think the produce business is a great way to start. So, I thank you for um, looking me up and letting me share some of my insights. Thank you. It was that gorgeous LinkedIn page. So tell your friend. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's been a true joy, Margaret. Thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, thank you to everyone who tuned in. Uh, where, Margaret, where can people go to learn more about Margaret Inc. and uh, the Empower nonprofit? So it's Margaret at MargaretInc.com with a hyphen. And empowerwomen.org is our website and it's it's up it's under kind of a little bit of a revision right now it's going to look a lot spicier in a couple of weeks but look it up and follow our events great wonderful and we'll also include links to all that you guys in the show notes so margaret thank you so much for being here margaret diarigo martin thank you to everyone who listened, uh, this woman has certainly changed the produce industry and left her mark on it forever. And uh, her her passion, her kind heart, and uh, all of her knowledge lives on today through the Margaret Inc. organization as well as the Empower nonprofit. So thank you to Margaret for being our guest and thank you to you all for listening. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a produce mom in you because there's a produce mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.